Hey Cake Charms and welcome back to another video and another episode of Can We Cake It? Before we get started I'm going to have to apologise, there is a bit of a storm blowing outside, my other half is doing something downstairs and the neighbours are demolishing their shed so if you can hear loads of background noise I do apologise, we're just going to ignore it and power on through. Now for those of you who don't know, my Can We Cake It? series is a chance for me to take on the latest trends and challenges right here on YouTube but give them a unique cakey spin. In our last episode we were celebrating the launch of the Nikki Tutorials and Beauty Bay palettes and if you haven't seen that yet I'll post a link up in the corner. But in today's episode of Can We Cake It? we're going to be taking on the GQ 10 Essentials Bootstrap Challenge. Let's get to the video. For those of you who don't know what the GQ 10 Essentials Bootstrap Challenge is, it's basically a take or a bit of a play on the GQ format of their 10 Essentials show, which is where they get in a celebrity to share 10 of their essential items that they need to survive. Over the last month or so, quite a few YouTubers have jumped on that trend sharing their own version of it possibly due to the fact that they don't think they would ever be invited by GQ to contribute to the real challenge, like this guy. I'm not sure, but I think Tanamojo might have originated this version. I don't watch Tanamojo, so I'm not entirely sure, but I know that James Charles has also done it, and the one that I actually saw was Brittany Broski, and I'll link hers down in the video description. As you can see, I haven't recreated the iconic GQ set because who's got time for that? But basically, I'm going to take you through my 10 essential baking and cake decorating items that I could not live without. Let's get started. What's up, Internet? I'm Mr. Baker's Cakes, and these are my essentials. The first item on my essentials list would have to be some good quality cake tins. You can't create a show-stopping cake without the perfect foundation and that is a well-baked cake. And I am a huge fan of the PME Seamless Bakeware, which look like this. I originally picked up my first set of the Seamless Tins when I was making a wedding cake for someone, gosh, a couple of years ago now and I have to say I was thoroughly converted and over the years since I've been gradually upgrading all of my tins to the PME Seamless Tins and then only this week I've just upgraded my four seven inch tins to four of the PME Seamless Tins too and you can see I haven't even taken the, the branding off yet because I haven't used them. I just find that they give me perfect results every single time and what more can you ask for? Once you've got your well-baked cake, the next thing you want to do is tort and level that cake. And so, the next item on my list is the iconic Ag Bay Cake Leveler. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, these things are not cheap. And to be honest, I probably would never have bought one for myself. But, at Cake International a few years ago, Back in the days when my husband used to come with me, before he realised how boring it is when you're not really interested in cake. To keep himself entertained, he used to go off on a bit of a wander and sometimes would buy me presents. I do kind of miss that aspect of it, actually. But on one such occasion, he wandered off and picked up one of these. Basically, the Ag Bay Cake Leveller features a razor sharp blade, and I mean razor sharp. In fact, if I take the protective cover off, you can see that for yourself. Obviously it has a blade cover, and then on each side it has um, measurements in inches so that you can set the height of your slice exactly where you want it to be. As I say, I probably would never have spent this sort of money on a cake level on myself, but now I've got one, I'm completely and utterly converted, and if this one broke, I would be replacing it in a heartbeat. It is definitely one of my essential pieces of cake kit that I could not live without. 
Yep, it is essentially just a small offset spatula. You might think it's not much to look at, but I'll tell you what, I use this, or in fact I have a few of the same one, but I use one of these on every single cake. This one is also by PME actually, and I'm quickly realizing that a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be showing you today is by PME. And for the longest of times, I actually just used to use giant offset spatulas for everything. I came into cake decorating by watching those kind of American cake decorating TV shows, and one thing you always saw them do was just pile buttercream or frosting onto the cake, and then grab a huge offset spatula and just kind of go to town on it. And so for years, that's what I used to do as well. It was actually my friend Nicola who first introduced me to these much smaller offset spatulas. And as I say now, I, I use them for everything, um, for filling my cakes, for covering my cakes, crumb coats, finishing touches, you name it. With the smaller ones, you just get so much more control. And yeah, I love them. I think I need to be buried holding one of these. You guessed it, it's another PME product. And again, it might not be much to look at, but these edge scrapers are so simple and yet give you the perfect results when you are crumb coating and finishing off your cakes. You purely use them just to scrape around the edge of your cake to give you that neat finish on your buttercream or your ganache or whatever you're using to cover your cake. Um, I have tons of these, they cost pennies and I just don't feel like you can ever have too many of them. As well as scraping around cakes, I use them for trimming off icing around cake boards. I use them for cutting out icing when I need a straight edge. Again, a tool that is really cheap, really simple, and can do a multitude of things is a surefire one in my book, and the PME plastic edge scrapers are definitely those. Once I've got a nice and neat finish on my cake using my edge scraper, that's when these bad boys come into play. These are acetate flexi smoothers, and they're actually designed for buffing icing to give you a square edge. I bought these from Shireen. Um, I think she's Shireen's Cakes and Bakes is the name of her company. But she makes these and she sells them in sets of all different, of all different shapes and sizes. And she was actually kind enough to send me a second set in blue, um, which definitely, I think, goes better in, in my studio. But I actually predominantly use these for giving me a flawless finish on my buttercream or my ganache or whatever I'm using to cover a cake. Because once you've done that initial layer with the, the normal edge scrape that we've talked about already, if you then go in with one of these, and just do a really light touch over the top, it blends out any bubbles, imperfections, anything, and gives you an absolutely flawless finish. So, if you haven't got any of these, yes, they're great for buffing sugar paste, but they are also absolutely fantastic for giving you a perfect finish on your buttercream or ganache covered cakes. And because they're flexible, you can even use them on unusually shaped cakes as well. In fact, I think I linked to my cauldron cake tutorial in my last video, and I was using one of these to smooth the edge of that cauldron. So if you wanna see them in action, check out last week's video. I'm quickly realizing that most of the things included in my list today are things that allow you to achieve a smooth and perfect finish on a cake, because next up we have icing smoothers or sugar paste smoothers or fondant smoothers or whatever you want to call them. And again, these ones are by PME. Promise I'm not sponsored, I just absolutely love their products, quite clearly, because they are in my essential kit. Now, these are mainly designed for smoothing your sugar paste or your fondant icing onto your cakes. And again, if you've watched any of my tutorial videos, you would have seen these in action. But Again, I like tools that can do a multitude of different things. And one of the great things about these, as well as smoothing icing onto cakes or cake boards, is they can be used if you want to create something like a baby block or something for a baby shower cake, just by using two together and shaping the icing. If I'm rolling sausages of paste that I need to be a really even length without kind of lumps and bulges from rolling with my fingers, I'll just pop one of these on top and roll it across the surface. 
They've got a curved edge on one side and a straight edge on the other, which means they're great if you need to line something up straight on the side of a cake. Again, they're just so simple, so cheap, and yet brilliant for what you need them to do. So, absolutely essential, could not live without them. I promise this is the last item that I would use for smoothing or finishing off a cake that I've covered, I promise. But it is a tool that you guys have heard me rhapsodize about so, so many times. It's the Sharp Edge Smooth Out from Cakes by Carol. I actually got sent one of these by Carol to review, gosh, way back when I first launched Mr. Baker's Cakes, the blog, which incidentally is my website. If you haven't checked it out, I will put a link down in the video description. But yeah, she sent me one of these as well as some of her acrylic plates to, to, to review for my website. And after using it for that first time, I'm gonna be honest, I was completely converted. Sharp edges was one of those things that I'd always struggled with and I, I tried some of the other techniques out there using two smoothers together, using a couple of the flexi smoothers that we talked about earlier where you put one on the side and one on the top and kind of bring the corners together that way. But I was one of those people who always used to over smooth and would end up with that kind of that telltale bulge or dip underneath the corner or I'd end up with a cake that kind of sloped in at the top because I'd smoothed it so much. And what I love about Carol Sharp Edge Smoother is that you can put this down on the cake board, you flip the cake upside down, I missed that bit. See, so on an acrylic disc, um, you flip the cake upside down and then you put this next to it and that right angle at the bottom of the smoother guarantees that any smoothing you do around the cake will be at a 90 degree angle or perpendicular angle to the cake board, giving you those perfectly straight sides. And then of course you just work your way around the cake with the smoother and it pushes that top corner into the sharp edge that is so trendy and fashionable at the moment. I have since picked up another one. So I now have two of them, although this one's a bit quiet, so don't look too closely at that. But yeah, absolutely essential. Whenever I'm doing a nice, neat, normal shaped cake, sharp edge smoother. Now I'm almost certain that I've talked about this before in videos. Again, it's from PME, but it is the um, flower and veining tool, I think is its official name, but I think most of us know it as the Dresden tool. It has that sharp edge on one side and that kind of more rounded spoon shape on the other side. I have lots of cake decorating tools and don't get me wrong, there are many, many of them that I love, but if I could only keep one of them, you know, if I was sent to a desert island with only one cake decorating tool, it would be the PME Dresden tool. And I know a lot of cake decorators who kind of veer more towards the sculpted cakes kind of style would agree with me that this is the tool. There you go, that's what I'll be buried with, my small offset spatula and my PME Dresden tool. And apparently I'm gonna be buried like an Egyptian mummy. Do you know, this is probably in the wrong place. If we're doing this in the order that I use them, this next item probably should have come right back at the start. But it is an acupuncture needle. There is probably no way that you're going to be able to see this on camera. Can you see that? Now from time to time, we all get air bubbles in our sugar paste, particularly if you use the more premium elastic pastes, because of course, where they're so elastic, they make it a lot easier to trap in air when you're kneading your paste. And for the longest of times, I used to just use normal kind of dressmaking pins to, to pop any air bubbles. And that would leave kind of a telltale pin mark in the icing. Loads of people said, you should try acupuncture needles. And of course I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure they're no different to a normal dressmaking pin. And then I actually went to the Renshaw Academy for a visit and I did some cake decorating with Emma Jane, who if you don't know of Emma Jane, she is one of the most iconic cake decorators in the world at the moment. She's ridiculously talented. But anyway, that aside, when I asked for a pin to pop an air bubble in my sugar paste, they produced acupuncture needles and they are game changing because 
they are so fine that when you pop it into the sugar paste, smooth out the air, the hole is so small that you can literally just rub it slightly and it disappears. And I actually, when I came home from Rancho Academy, tracked down the exact same ones that we used. I'm running out of them now because obviously you can't really wash them, so you have to kind of use them, dispose of them. So I need to get some more and I have to try and remember where I got them from because I've had them for about two years now. But they are fantastic. They are great for popping air bubbles in your sugar paste. And to all the people who tried to recommend them to me that I kind of poo-pooed, I apologize. You were right. Acupuncture needles are the way forward. Just be careful where you put them down because they're so small and fine. I live in fear of one day rolling one into a decoration. Last up, you may recall right near the start, I said that for me, if at all it's going to prove really valuable or essential in my cake kit, it has to do multiple jobs. And this next item isn't really, I guess, what you would call a cake decorating item but it has become essential in my cake decorating kit just because again it is so versatile and that is a knife and specifically a large chef's knife. Chef's knives generally are quite big, they usually have a curved blade so that you can rock them and this one is by Sabatier, Sabatier, I never know how to pronounce that but yes and it was given to me as a gift when I left one of my previous schools. I've had it sharpened a couple of times, so I do keep it quite sharp. Um, and actually, this is the knife that I generally use in my cooking. But if I am working on cake decorations that require me to have long, thin cuts, rather than use a ribbon cutter, I do tend to prefer to use a kitchen knife. It just gives you much cleaner cuts. You tend to get less dragging than you would get from a ribbon cutter or from a, a craft knife or something like that. And again, it's really versatile because it can cut all sorts of different things. I'm, I don't really know what else you can say about a knife. If I can sneak in an extra item, I have recently also added a, a paro knife to my kit as well. And some of you may recognize this as one of the ones that Zoe's Fancy Cakes always uses. Um, Zoe's a really good friend of mine and she sent me this. And this one I do keep exclusively just for cake decorating because, you know, it does annoy other people when our chef's knife disappears out of our home kitchen and into my studio. So it's nice to have a knife that is dedicated just for cake, but I do prefer that much bigger blade for the most part, hence the chef's knife. But so there you go guys, those are the 10 essential things that I could not live without when I'm baking and cake decorating. You'll have to let me know how your list compares to mine. Are there any things that are the same? Are there any things that are different? I'm sure at least a few of you will be surprised that you didn't see an airbrush on that list. And up until a couple of months ago, you probably would have done. But I am really trying to get into dry dusting my cakes and my cake decorations at the moment. So I thought just as a surprise, I'd leave off the airbrush and see after a few months of playing around with airbrushing and dusting, see which one comes out on top. But yes, do head down to the video comments and let me know what would be on your top 10 list of essential cake decorating items. And let me know how you think I did trying to adapt the GQ 10 essentials format for our cake decorating community right here. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you're not already subscribed to Mr. Baker's Cakes here on YouTube, you can do that right now by hitting the big red button. I'll be back at the same time next week with another video. Until then, stay safe, take care, and happy caking. Bye guys.